Aviation giant Airbus has an innovation arm called Upnext. Its CEO just recently mentioned that superconducting technologies would be the key enabler for high power electrification of future hydrogen powered aircraft. So what are these superconducting technologies and how will they uplift electric aviation is the topic we will explore in this video. In the last three years, we have seen a lot of activity in electric aircraft that use hydrogen as a fuel. Hydrogen has many notable advantages, but there are problems with its storage. Gaseous hydrogen is the lightest gas there is, which means to store a required mass of it, very high pressure is required. Hydrogen gas is generally stored at 200 to 700 bars. 700 bars means nearly 700 times the atmospheric pressure. To store it at high pressure, the required storage cylinders are complex and costly. Even fuel cell cars that use hydrogen compressed at 700 bars, such as the Toyota Mirai, have only slightly higher mileage compared to battery electric vehicles. For example, the Toyota Mirai has a range of 402 miles, while the comparable Tesla Model 3 has a range of 352 miles. For electric aircraft, higher energy density is required. And so, it is the liquid form of hydrogen that realizes the true potential of energy-rich rocket fuel that it is. The density of liquid hydrogen is 70.8 kilograms per cubic meter, whereas the density of gaseous hydrogen at 700 bar pressure is 42 kilograms per cubic meter. That is 68% more energy for a given amount of volume. The problem is that hydrogen can only be liquefied by cooling it to minus 253 degrees centigrade. This can take a lot of energy. Almost 13 to 30% 30 of the energy of hydrogen is lost in its liquefaction. And this shrinks the advantage liquid hydrogen can offer. But there is a hidden advantage in the low temperature that liquid hydrogen possesses, and it is the superconducting technology. In physics, it is well known that if the temperature of a material is dropped below a certain value, then it achieves superconductivity. That is, the electrical resistance of the material goes to zero. Although conventional electrical materials such as copper achieve superconductivity at very low temperatures, that is, at 35 Kelvin or minus 238 degrees centigrade, but there are materials that are called high temperature superconductors that achieve this state at relatively higher temperatures. This has significant benefits in weight and efficiency gain. For example, a superconductor wire the size of your thumb could carry much more power more efficiently than a copper cable the thickness of your arm. The usage of superconducting and chirogenic technologies allows to half the weight of components reduce the voltage to below 500 volts and half the electrical losses. Similarly, cooling the motor allows it to run more efficiently even at higher RPM. Airbus says it has been developing superconducting technologies for high power electric propulsion for several years, which culminated in the power on of an integrated 500 kilowatt chirogenic propulsion system called Ascend. After the success of Ascent, Airbus has announced a bigger program called Chiroprop, which is a 2 megawatt propulsion unit. The cooling system for the Airbus demonstrator program maintains the temperature between 30 Kelvin and 120 Kelvin. Airbus has estimated that superconducting technologies can be more than 2 to 3 times lighter than a conventional system through a reduction in cable weight and a limit of 30 kilowatts per kilogram in power electronics without compromising a 97% powertrain efficiency. This technology is exciting indeed. There already has been a flight completed on liquid hydrogen by H2Fly. It however did not use superconducting technology. And with this, the video is concluded. If you learned something from it, then please do give it a thumbs up. Thank you for your attention.